I am talking to one of the most exciting fighters in the sport of boxing, a former featherweight world champion and the unbeaten Oscar Valdez. Uh, he might be entering a little bit of a war on Saturday night ESPN, 10 p.m. Eastern, when he challenges Miguel Burchelt for the WBO 130 title. Oscar, always a pleasure to talk to you, sir, or see you compete in the ring. Um, let's just say it right here, man. I'm jumping out of my skin with excitement ahead of Saturday night. What the heck are you feeling? Oh, I'm very excited. I'm anxious. I'm anxious right now to, to step in the ring this, this, this Saturday night. Like I said, I'm very excited because this is the this is the fight of my lifetime. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do whatever it takes to take advantage of it and come back home victorious, take that belt back to my family and and try to accomplish my dream. Ever since I was a little kid, I dream about holding the WBC world title. This is my chance. I know it's a tough fight. I know that Cambridge is a, is, a, is a true champion, but nobody's invincible out there. No, no fighter is invincible. Nothing, nothing, nothing is written in life. So that shows me that if I work hard, if I did, if I'm very dedicated, and if I push myself, I can also become a world champion, the WBC world title, and I'm taking advantage of that moment. Well, nothing may be written in life, but in boxing, there is something written. You get two hungry, incredible Mexican fighters in the ring, Oscar, and uh, really bad things happen, and bad meaning good and exciting. Let's be honest with this, okay? Maybe uh, Rio Salvarado, maybe Salido Vargas, the most recent fights I can remember, where everybody involved, promoters, fighters, fans, referees, Guy on the street corner is like, this thing's going to bang. Uh, I feel like this fight, Saturday Night Las Vegas, the expectations are through the roof. Do you have those same expectations that you could be one half of an instant action classic here? Well, definitely. Like I said before, every time you got two Mexican fighters inside the ring, there's always a good show, a good boxing fight. And I think with Ala Carmen style and my style, I think it has all those ingredients to be a great, great fight. So I'm going in there physically and mentally prepared for it. I'm well prepared. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited because I grew up watching. I grew up watching wars. I grew up watching Eric Morales, Marco Antonio Barrera. I grew up watching Israel Vasquez versus Rafael Marquez. And of course, I watched, I watched all those fights every, when every time there's two Mexican fighters, like you just mentioned, Salido Vargas, uh, Michael Alvarado versus Brandon Rios. Oscar de la Hoya versus Fernando Vargas. You know, these are all great fights. They all have something in common. They're true Mexican fighters who go in there and give their all. You know, they, they, they leave their blood, sweat, and tears inside the ring, and do everything to try to win. And that's my case. I know Ala Cambridge is, gonna, is not going to let it go easy. It's not going to let that title belt go easy. So I know it's going to be tough, but it's not impossible. Like I said before, I've worked very hard physically and mentally for this opportunity, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to come back victorious. How do you balance out the idea heading into a fight of I'm just going to go in there and brawl and maybe be reckless because that's who I am, that's what the fans expect, there's a you know reputation of the strong Mexican fighters mixed with maybe if I box a little, maybe if I jab a little, I'll have a better chance yeah. to win. Do you deal with that dilemma all the time in your fight game? I mean, um, we always have plans, you know. We always have a strategy, of course. We have a strategy, plan A, plan B. But a lot of times when you get inside the ring, you get a very good shot in the face. You know, that strategy goes out the window and sometimes you just got to brawl it out and, and just see who has the bigger heart inside the ring. And that's been the case with a lot of these fights. You know, of course, with the Scott Quick fight, I had a game plan and it was working. So I got my jaw broken with that right hand and, you know, just started putting the pressure on me. So then we had to probably let out. So I think it could happen. It could, it could be a war, but also, you know, a lot of people forget that I have a, a great amateur background. You know, I fought the best as an amateur. And that's helped me before as a professional do have a better boxing skills, move around. Like you said, jab around, move around the ring, you know, use your legs. I do got that. And I could use it this fight. You know, it all depends on what a conversation brings to the table. I'm going to be very prepared, and I'm going to be the overall smarter fighter inside there. By being smart, it doesn't mean you go in there and you run and try to jab your way out of everything. It means you go in there and you look for those shots, you counter punch them, and you try to make them miss a shot and then make them, make them pay for his mistakes. 
Well, you've authored uh, or co-authored some fantastic fights in your featherweight run, especially you mentioned the Scott Quigg fight. You fought Mariaga, you fought Cervania. Uh, it ends up being eventually a fun ass fight. Do you feel like in any of those or, or maybe a fight I didn't mention that you've been forced to empty everything you had in order to win it? Um, but without a doubt, the, the one fight I, I feel I had to empty it every now was with the Scott Quick fight due to due through the the jaw injury. A lot of the people don't know that I fought with with a fractured rib before, and then when, when now with a broken jaw, and I've been in the canvas before, but I always come out victorious because of my mindset. You know, losing it is never an option for me. I always work so hard to come back to my family as a winner, to come back fam and feed my family because it's a big family that I have. So that's a great motivation that I have. I'm not going to let this guy beat me because if, he, if I lose, that's taking away food from the table for my family. And I'm not going to let that happen. So that's just my mindset. You know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to not give up inside the ring and always leave it all. I mean, that's what you do. And it's, it's humbling. It's inspiring. Uh, you got big huevos, as we say, around these parts, <laughs> talking about a fighter with we have so much respect for. Where does that come from? And I don't want you to just say, well, I'm a Mexican fighter. I'm no. born and bred for this. It might be true, <laughs> but not everybody's the same. How do you explain your next level toughness? Because I come from a, from a big family. And we come from very humble beginnings. You know, we're, we're, we started off with, with literally nothing. Me and my father were homeless at the time. We didn't have a place to stay. We would stay with our aunts, with our with with family members. That was very hard growing up. So I don't want to ever come back to that, and I don't want my family members to 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 live what I what me and my father lived as a growing up. So we got to continue eating. We got to continue winning, and we got to continue growing. I have to win because of my family. I have to win because, we, like I said before, I put food on the table. Um the one who a lot of people depend on, not just my family, but I got a lot of people who depend on me to win. So that's what motivates me to win all these fights because it's not just me who, who, who I depend on. It's a lot of people who depend on me. So I cannot just go in there and lose. That's why that's what makes me work harder in the gym because that's where you win the fights. So I'm always well prepared for each and every fight. And my mindset is what tells me losing is never an option. You're a winner. It doesn't matter if I fight Manny Pacquiao. I will always tell myself in my mind that I'm the better fighter. And I think that's the way everybody should think. You know, have a mentality of a winner. And, 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 and it doesn't matter who you're going up against, but always try to be number one. Yeah, absolutely. Love hearing that like that. Uh, let's talk about Miguel Burchell. I, I watched the fantastically produced top rank uh, docu-series getting us fired up for this fight. It, it, it would appear you've got a lot of respect for this man. He's one of the best, if not the best fighter at 130 pounds. He's got that shiny green belt. Uh, what do you like about him as a fighter and a man heading into this matchup? What I like about him right now is that he's looking for the knockout. You've said it before. I've heard him say it. He's going to go out there and try to knock me out. And I welcome him. Come over here. I want to see you try and knock me out. Because uh, if you try to knock me out, you're going to leave that opening. And you better watch out when you're looking for the knockout because you can't get knocked out yourself. So I've been working very hard on these counter punches, very, very hard in my defense. I know Alakabic is a tough fighter. He's a great champion. He's a champion inside the ring and outside the, outside the ring. I got nothing but respect for him. There's nothing personal against us. It's just that he has something that I've won for a long time, which is the WBC world title. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to take it away from him. After this, yeah, we can still become friends. Yeah, we can we can hug each other and hug it out. And that's how we give up a great fight, great fight. But once this fight was announced and once this fight was signed as a contract, there's no friendship. There's no nothing. I got respect for him as a as a person is everything, but that's out the window for right now. Right now, we're going to be professional. We're going to fight. And after that, then whatever happens, happens. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Cannot wait to see this one. Uh, let's talk about you moving up to 130. Got a couple fights under your belt. Uh, how different is it for you from 126? Are you the same fighter? Is there any, anything, any concerns there? Because I see some of the hardcores going, oh, maybe Burchelt's too big for him. Too big my ass. This is going to be a fight, man. I can't wait to see this. But uh, was there any adjustment period for you in moving up? Well, I'm, it's been over a year already that I've been 130. You know, and it was very hard for me to wake 126. I look as a small fighter. I've, I've been like that every, every day since I was in the amateurs. I would, we were way the same, and my opponent will always look bigger than me. 
And that's something normal for me already. I know all the is going to look bigger than me the day of the way. That's not going to be a problem for me because I'm used to it. You know, the, it might impress the other people, might improve, impress the fans. But for me, it's nothing different. You know, I've always been like that. I've always been skinnier than from what I weigh. A lot of trainers tell me, oh, you're looking shape already. You're, you're on weight already. And people, they don't know that I'm five to 10 pounds over because that's just my, that's how my body looks. But um, it was very hard to make, to make 126. I definitely feel way stronger than 130. Way stronger. I got the stamina to go more rounds. I got the energy to go and do, do more things. As 126, I, can, I would not be able to hear, hear and, and talk to you virtually the same way I'm talking because I would be extremely dehydrated. My mouth would have no saliva to be even moving and talking the way I'm talking right now. It was very hard. It wasn't healthy for my body. But right now, I'm extremely healthy, very, very hungry, and ready for this fight. Love it. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, this is the deal. When you get into these wars, talk to me. I'm a layman here. I'm a huge fight fan, not a fighter myself. How much fun is it when you're trading, you're receiving? I mean, do you feel the pain? Is the adrenaline rush just intoxicating? What is that like? It's very fun. It's very fun. They say you got to be a little bit crazy to be a fighter because who likes to get a hit? Nobody, right? But as a fighter, sometimes getting hit brings you that motivation to hit them back. And then you hit them one more time, then you hit them back. And it's just, it's extremely fun as long as you don't get tired. When you get tired and they're hitting you, it gets extremely scary because you feel vulnerable. And inside the ring, at the end of the day, it's just you and that fighter. Nobody can help you. If you're getting held by the referee, it's because you're done already. So it's extremely scary when you're tired. But if you're in shape and you're ready and you're, and you're moving, you're hitting, ducking and hitting, and you, hit, you might get hit with a couple of shots, that's the fun part. Fighting is the fun part. The training, that's where it sucks. That's where it sucks to wake up in the morning and go around. It sucks to do a lot of things. But to do the right things, to do the right things in life, they all suck. Being disciplined is not easy. You know, waking up early to go to a job is not easy. Waking up, uh, you know, staying in a healthy diet is not easy. With if it's if it's too easy, it's not good for you. And if it's very hard, it's my it's because it's my good. It be, it's good for you. Life is not easy, so I always use that term the same as boxing. Yeah, I can certainly appreciate that wisdom there. Uh, when people go through wars together classic fights uh you know this not every time right Morales and Marrera I'm sorry uh Barrera and Morales I don't ever want to see them friendly right I want to it's still it's still <laughs> real to me but Ward and Gotti became you know they trained each other they were all that you and Scott Quigg is there a uh, connection there now because you endured that together I mean uh if I were to see Scott Quigg I got, I got nothing but respect for him uh I, I uh I've uh, met him before. We actually became, we were actually sparring partners before the fight. You know, we, we actually got to spar two times, I believe. He's a great person. He's a, he's, a, he's a very humble fighter. If I were to see him in the streets, I would go up to him and hug him and wish him nothing but the best. Um, I will never forget the day after the, after the fight, he came and hugged me. He told me, he said he was, he apologized for not making weight. He told me he tried hard to make weight and he couldn't do it. So I said, thank you for, for those words and thank you for, we're trying. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I understand when you can, your body can't make weight no more. You just can't make weight no more. So there's no there's no rivalry as far as some, something personal. Me and Scott Quinn. If um if I were to get a text from him, or, you know, phone call or something, I would gladly just go eat somewhere. I, I don't know. I will. I have nothing but respect for him. I have respect for all fighters. Uh, to this day, I have I've had not gotten something personal with no other fighters, and that's how I like it because I'm a very positive guy. There's nothing personal. It's just Step in the ring. Let's let us do our fist, do the talking. If uh, whoever wins, you know, congratulations. If I win, you know, whatever. And let's just move on in life. Because at the end of the day, you know, well, the most important thing is always come back to our families. Yeah, indeed. Uh, do you feel like the underdog? Do you feel like the favorite? What is your mindset in terms of, I haven't even seen the betting odds, so I'm speaking a little bit out of school here. But but what's your mentality coming in? I mean, you're the challenger coming into this new weight class a couple fights in. How, how are you thinking that like this? I'm definitely the underdog, you know, as far as, you know, what's real. What's real, and uh, I don't know how much. I don't really care. But I love the fact that I'm the underdog. I just bring nothing but motivation to myself. Um, you know, Mike uh, Buster Douglas was an underdog with Mike Tyson. That's something extreme. 
you know, Andy Andy Reese was an underdog with Joshua. And that was more extreme. You know, Teofimo and Lomachenko was you know something similar to all those fights. This fight's not that uh, not that not that you know far apart from my underdog. Of course, he's uh, of course I'm the underdog. He's the bigger fighter, the the champion. But that doesn't bother me at all. I just want to prove a lot of people wrong. You know, a lot of people. Um, that's where a lot of boxing analysis and a lot of like, boxing experts. You know, I've heard my idol Julio Cesar Chavez said that the Alakran Bridge is going to win. And that just brings nothing but motivation to me because I don't think, I think there's nothing beautiful out there in life that to prove everybody wrong. You know, that's something that's unexplainable. You know, you just feel great to that you, that you showed everybody wrong. If you tell me I can't do it, that's just going to bring nothing motivation for me to try to prove you wrong. I love it. I love you. Look, Oscar, I was a 10 out of 10 in excitement. I think you had just dialed it up to 11 here. Tech, <laughs> talking to you. Great stuff, man. I wish you the best of luck in this one. Uh, ha- happy, healthy, you and Miguel Burchell. It's Saturday. It's 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Junior lightweight world title. Oscar Valdez putting the unbeaten streak on the line, putting it all on the line. Go out there and get it done, man. Appreciate it, my brother. Appreciate it.